our questions. Number 11. You're watching a movie in a crowded theater. Though the plot is mediocre, you find yourself dazzled by the special effects. But with 20 minutes left in the film, you are struck with an undeniable feeling of doom. You are suddenly certain your mother has just died. There is no logical reason for this to be true, but you are certain of it. You are overtaken by the irrational metaphysical sense that somewhere your mom has just perished. But this is only an intuitive anamorphous feeling. There is no evidence for this. And your mother has not been ill. Would you immediately exit the theater, or would you finish watching the movie? Uh, I would immediately exit the theater because I have this like uncontrollable need to take care of my mother. Uh, maybe it's because she's taken care of me all my life, but uh, when she's sick and things like that, I feel the need to take care of her. Um, also, if special effects aren't worth anything related to me. <laughs> if they are to you, I mean, my mom's more important than a movie. This question got a little serious, didn't it? Number 12. You meet a wizard in downtown Chicago. The wizard tells you he can make you more attractive if you pay him money. When you ask how this process works, the wizard points to a random person on the street. You look at this random stranger. The wizard says, I will now make them a dollar more attractive. He waves his magic wand. This person does not change at all as far as you can see. But nothing is, nothing is different. But somehow, this person is suddenly a little more appealing. The tangible difference is invisible to the naked eye, but you can't deny that this person is vaguely sexier. This wizard has one rule, though. You can only pay him once. You can't keep giving him money until you're satisfied. You can only pay him one lump sum up front. How much cash do you give the wizard? Well, depending on the amount of money I have, uh, if I had, say, like $500, I'd give him 100 If I had 20 I I'd just give him 20 obviously. But, uh... A hundred, that could do good. This needs a little work, so I think a hundred would do, good, do well. Uh, number thirteen. Every person you've ever slept with is invited to a banquet where you are the guest of honor. No one will be in attendance except you, the collection of your former lovers, and the catering service. After the meal, you are asked to give a fifteen-minute speech to the assembly. What do you talk about? Well, let's say this banquet were for me because I donated a large sum of money to an organization. In this case, I would talk about the organization. Say I was a doctor and I like saved a life or something like that, I would talk about that. If I discovered something amazing and that's what it was about, I would talk about that. Uh, if it was just like a banquet celebrating me, I would talk about me. Because it's about me. It's all about me, right? Right, number 14. For reasons you cannot that cannot be explained, cats can suddenly read at a 12th grade level. They can't talk and they can't write, but they can read silently and understand the text. Many cats love this new skill because they now have something to do all day while they lay around the house. However, a few cats become depressed because reading forces them to realize the limitations of their existence, not to mention the utter frustration of being unable to express themselves. This being the case, do you think the average cat would enjoy Garfield, or would cats find this cartoon to be an insulting caricature? Caricature. Um, I believe that they would be completely insulted that there is this cartoon animal that is nothing like any other cats, and they'd be all pissed off about the lasagna thing, because that's just preposterous. Especially my cat, she don't eat anything but cat food. She's not interested in anything but cat food. Um... If I were a cat, I'd be totally insulted by this bullshit that whatever has been written about cats when it's just completely unrealistic. And also, I believe that many of the cats that feel that way would all band together and attempt to take the life of the, the guy who writes Garfield, whoever that is. Okay, that's all the questions for today. Um, I would like to invite you to Google or I will put a link down in the down bar, the, the description, whatever bar, um, to where you can find this. I invite you to go read Chuck Klosterman's answers to Chuck Klosterman's questions. Um, they're not in here. They're not in the book. But they are online. And um, they're funny and interesting. Some of them are a little bit boring. But 
that's why I like the questions so much because of his answers. And also, they're cool questions. But uh, don't forget to answer them yourself down below in that box down there. And um, have a good day. I'll see you later.